I'm Jesse Sharkey, Vice President of the CTU. And I'm Pavlin Jankov, Researcher at the CTU. The purpose of this video is to talk about teacher and PSRP pay, and also to talk about where the CTU is going as a union in terms of securing fair compensation for the people in our profession. Uh, we're going to try to address some misconceptions that are out there, and also talk about what's going on with our teacher pay tables. Um, Pavel, maybe you can start us off and talk a little bit about where we've been as a profession um, over the past. Right, so the first chart I want to walk us through actually goes through some of the history behind our salaries, going back over three decades. Um, so the first chart here you're seeing on the video begins back in 1979. The blue line represents all the cost of living raises we've had over that time. Think of it as representing a starting PSRP or teacher's salary and how that starting salary has increased over this time period. Relative to 1979, the red line represents inflation. If the blue line is above the red line, cumulative wage growth since 1979 has outpaced inflation. If it's below, then wage growth has fallen behind inflation. So this chart shows that teacher wages have gone up pretty steadily, with our worst hits coming during times of financial crisis. But starting at the beginning, you can see that once you factor in inflation, we ended up in the 1980s behind where we were in 1979. That's actually not too surprising, considering the context. This was a time period bookended by two brutal recessions, the economy tanked, greatly affecting revenues for public services. The Board of Education basically went bankrupt in 1979 and was taken over by the State Finance Authority. So we didn't really close the gap between the lines until the late 90s through the early mid-2000s in the daily years. Wage growth finally rose above inflation in 2007. Uh, Pavel, let me jump in here because before we start um, going out and celebrating the legacy of Richard M. Daly, we should remind ourselves um, that Daly really stopped funding our pensions between 1995 and 2005 and funded the school system through debt. That's right. So after a decade of no payments, over which time period there was $2 billion pension funds diverted from the fund, the board finally resumed payments in 2006. But as you can see from this chart, pulled from Chicago Teachers Pension Fund documents, the contributions then were still not anywhere close to what the pension fund required in order to support our promised teacher pensions. So since the 90s, we've had a steady erosion in the health of our, of our fund. You can see that erosion in this chart, showing the funding ratio over two decades. $2 billion in pension tax revenue diverted from the fund from 1995 to 2005, and then more recently in 2010, the board fought for another pension holiday, resulting in another $1.2 billion diverted from the fund. And, and furthermore, Mayor Daley also privatized schools. Um, he he uh, implemented a plan called Renaissance 2010, which um, uh, closed um, dozens and dozens of Chicago public schools and opened privately managed charter schools, um, which was part of um, the, the movement to drive enrollment down in, in the public school system and, and, and borrowed to create the creation of those new schools, which is part of putting the district on a path to financial ruin. And so we saw that path come to a head over the last decade, with the wider economic crisis hurting public revenues again, just like the financial crisis in the 1970s. But despite the financial crisis over the last decade, the board is now finally making its necessary pension payments. So again, reflecting back over those two decades, we can see how graphing CPS expenditures on teacher salaries alone shows a slow, steady rise and then a dip over the last decade as the impact of the district's cuts and layoffs start to take a toll. But graphing CPS expenditures on teacher pensions, we can see how much more the board is spending on pensions in the last five years as they make up for their past diversion of those funds. The combined total is depicted in the gray line which other than for the three-year pension holiday, really shows a slow rise over the last two decades. So let's talk more in depth about what happened to the pay tables in 2012. But before we get there, we need to talk about the context of the strike in 2012 and a mayor Emanuel who just been elected on the basis of trying to like separate teachers from the union with the waiting for Superman moment. They wanted to impose merit pay. They wanted to get rid of lanes and steps. Uh, and they just wanted to try to bust our union in general. They came with a 16-page contract rewrite. Um, so the first thing we have to say is that like we fought a hard fight that electrified the country. We were in the we were in the sort of forefront of showing that you could not separate parents, community, and concern for schools from teachers. And so that was an important struggle. That was the first time our union had done that in 25 years. Um, that being said, we were able to like gain some ground and fight them off on many aspects of what they were trying to take from us. But we did not stop everything. Um, so for example, we won short-term disability rights. 
We won the right to appeal ratings. We won progressive discipline. Those are all things that were important, but we could not stop, um, for example, the loss of banking of sick days, and they were able to impose some specific changes in the pay table, which we couldn't stop. And so, Pavel, could you go into some detail about what actually the changes in the pay table were? Sure, so regarding the salary tables, there's two parts to the changes. The first is that the 2012 contract changed the way lanes and steps are calculated. A teacher moving up a step will have their new annual pay calculated by having their prior pay adjusted by the percentage raise, or COLA, then adding, then adding on the value of the step they're moving up to. It used to be that when there was a COLA, we simply multiplied every number in the chart by the percentage raise to create the new schedule. Yes, the simplicity of that old chart was appealing. People could just look at it and, and tell what their salary was supposed to be. Right, so that was the first part. The second change related to the size of the steps. Right, and that changed, right? Because in, in bargaining, um, the board insisted that the biggest steps come um, several years into a teacher's career after they made tenure. And so the only way that we could get the board to put money into the salary table was to delay when the larger steps came. Yeah, so the effect of that is that salary growth over the first years of a teacher's career is less rapid than in the past. So if you just look at the printed salary tables, you'll see that impact. The combination of the lower values of the early steps along with 0% colas for two years, frozen steps in 2015, contributed to slower growth of some salaries. To make that clear, I want to use a specific example. So this table shows a salary schedule from the 2015 year from the old contract and the salary for the 2017 year, two years later in our new contract. If you look at step eight, the salary for step eight teacher in 2017 is less than for a step, step eight teacher in 2015. So what's happening is that some teachers will look at the pay table and say, whoa, my pay is going down. That's right, but a member's pay is not actually going down because each member is actually climbing up through the chart. So here are the salary tables for those same two years again, but I've highlighted where a teacher at each step would actually move to from 2015 to 2017. I've also added up what the change amounts to along with the percentage increase. So let's look at step eight, for example. A teacher at step eight in 2015 got a $5,000 increase in pay when they moved up to step 10 in the 2017 year, which amounts to a 7.2% increase. A teacher who arrived at step eight in the 2016-17 year started off at step six in the 2014-2015 year. That increase amounted to $5,139, an 8.3% increase. So you're saying that every teacher is actually getting a pay increase of somewhere between four and 8%, not even accounting for COLAs. Right, and even though new teachers are starting off a bit slow due to the changes in the steps and the colas, they end up getting big salary bumps later on in their careers that offset that. This next chart shows that in a bit more detail. So we wanna remain focused on those two teachers we discussed before. The teacher who was on step eight in 2015, teacher A, and the teacher on step eight in 2017, teacher B. This chart is different than the one we looked at prior. This one shows the salary trajectory of those two teachers since their starting year. These teachers started their careers in 2007 and 2009 respectively. So each row shows what that teacher made at each step. You can see how teacher A, starting in 2007, earned a higher salary at step eight than teacher B, who started in 2009. However, teacher B then gets large increases in the following two years, which are the last two years of the current contract, ending up at just over 75K at year 10 compared to the 74K that teacher A, teacher A had made at step 10. So is there any truth to the claim that teachers are getting a pay cut? No, because again, our teachers have climbed up through the salary schedule. There has been slower growth in the early years in the restructured steps, but then in the later years, those steps increase steeply. So just as an initial look, let's assume we keep our steps in career ladder, but then there are no more raises at all into the future, so 0% COLAs. This chart shows you what lifetime earnings would be in that scenario over a career of 20 years for a couple of different teachers, starting with a first year teacher in 1998, 2002, 2006, and so on. If we assume that from 2019 on we'd get no raises, you can see how lifetime earnings do in fact dip for folks who came in after 2006. In this scenario, those teachers would spend most of their careers getting no raises. But, but we did not get 0% raises. Uh, this current contract is 2.5% this year, and we have no intention of taking 0% COLAs into the future. Right, that's not really a realistic scenario at all. So another way to model out the future is by using the PASS as guidance. Over the last 20 years, the average COLA has been right around 3%. So this table is the same as before, 
but assumes 3% colas into the future. Note how the bars in this table depicting lifetime earnings gets progressively larger the more recent a teacher's starting year. A teacher starting in 2010 earns over $1.5 million over 20 years. They would earn more than a teacher who started in 2006 and end up earning several hundred thousand dollars more than someone who started a decade earlier. When you think about where we've been over the last 30 years, teacher's pay has gone up steadily over that period of time, but it has not gone up automatically and it has only gone up because we fought for it and we stuck together as a union and we said that our profession has to be respected and we've made demands. We struck when we needed to uh, and we continue to keep that pattern going into the future. If you think back a generation and a half ago, two generations ago, Teaching was not considered a living wage profession. This is a profession what young women did, and when they got married, they left the profession. The only reason that it's changed is because we've acted like a union and made wage demands and made demands about the professionalization and the high quality of public education. Uh, what we're looking at now is the Board of Education coming out of a historic financial crisis, our demand for uh, pay increases, for holding the line on our benefits, and for um, getting more people into our schools to deal with the, the chronic shortfalls in, in many aspects of our work life. Those are things that have to be at the forefront of our negotiations, and we have every intention of fighting for that in the upcoming contract. We're gonna have to stick together and act like a union in order to win it.